In this video, what I want to do is share with you three properties of exponents that students often forget. The first one is going to be when you have a fraction raised to a negative power such that like negative or two over three raised to the negative second power. Now, most students remember that if I have like x to the negative second power, if I wanted to make that positive, you're just gonna put this in the denominator. So it'd be one over x squared. And then sometimes this one gets confusing for students, but they usually remember it. If you have a negative in the denominator, just put it in the numerator and now it's gonna be positive. But for whatever reason, it, whenever we're dealing with a fraction, students just kind of forget like, well, what do I do here? And the easiest thing to remember is whenever you have a fraction raised to a negative power, all you simply need to do is reciprocate your fraction and now you can rewrite it as a positive power. And if that's still kind of confusing or something that you still feel like you're gonna forget, then just go ahead and apply the negative two to the numerator as well as to the denominator. Therefore, you have a two to the negative second power a three to the negative second power, and then using these two rules that hopefully you can remember, then you'll have a three squared all over a two squared. And now three halves squared is just three halves times three halves or three squared divided by two squared. And you can see either one is both gonna give you the exact same answer. Now the next property doesn't happen as much and a lot of times we kind of focus on it in a separate kind of portion, but I think it's very helpful to remember a couple things when I'm dealing with exponents and I have a radical. Remember, all radicals can be rewritten as rational powers. That's one thing that kind of students kind of forget. And especially when we go through a problem with properties of radicals and then we kind of move away from it, they always forget, oh yeah, I can always rewrite a my radical as a rational power. And sometimes that can help us be able to evaluate simplify or solve a problem a little bit more easier. So just remember, if I have a value like n x to the m, I can always rewrite that as x to the m over n. So when you're dealing with like a square root, which I have in this case, that would be a two, that would be your index, and I have x raised to the first power, I can rewrite that as an x to the one half power. So in this case, we could go ahead and rewrite everything to the one half power, but not always is it always going to be the easiest case. Like for instance, if I was gonna deal with the square root of eight, I don't really wanna deal with eight raised to the one half power. I'm just gonna go ahead and first break up this radical into the product of each of my terms. So I have this as the square root of eight times the square root of x squared, times the square root of y to the eighth. Now, the square root of eight, I don't wanna write that as eight to the one half power. I recognize I can rewrite this as four times two, right? And I know I can take the square root of four, which is gonna give me two, square root of two. I could rewrite the one half power, but most students remember the square root of x squared, those are inverse operations of each other, so they're just gonna undo each other, right? So that's just gonna leave me with an x, which I'll write two more times down. However, for y to the eighth, if I don't wanna go through this process of breaking them down and trying to identify how to simplify that, if I just go ahead and rewrite this as a rational power, it would look something like this. Again, this is going to be my index or the square root of y to the eighth. You could think about that as being raised to the first power, y to the eighth raised to the first power. So therefore I can rewrite y to the eighth as a one half. Now apply my product rules of exponents. Whenever you have an exponent raised to another power, you're just gonna simply multiply those powers. So eight times one half is going to be a y to the fourth. Now, if I just wanted to clean this up, I could rewrite this final expression as two x to the y to the fourth times the square root of two. So not always our rational power is going to be helpful. You can see in this case, I didn't wanna use rational powers, but a lot of times they can just make our life a lot easier. So don't forget to think about converting your radicals into rational powers. The last example here is going to be applying the power to product as well as the power to quotient rule. And a lot of students will just kind of forget about this one. It's pretty fairly basic, but I think it's just very important. Whenever you have an expression, and if it's either written as multiple terms being multiplied by each other, or multiple terms being divided by each other, whenever those that expression is being raised to a power, that power has to be distributed to each and every one of those terms. So therefore, if I was going to rewrite it, it's now gonna look something like this. So just remember, again, this is the power to product and power to quotient rule. When you have an expression raised to a power, make sure you distribute that power to each and every term inside the expression. Now, there's a caveat to that that is only gonna work when your terms are separated by multiplication, not when your terms are separated by addition or subtraction. However, now we can just go ahead and simplify each of these terms separately. So four squared is gonna give me a 16, y to the fourth, and we have a three to the nine, I'm sorry, three to the ninth, that's just going to be a nine. And four times two is going to be an x to the eighth power. Now, the last property, I said there's only three, but there's actually one more property I want to talk to you about. What about if I have two x squared 
plus a 4x cubed. All we simply need to do in this case is add the 2 plus 4 to give us 6 and x to the fifth. Just kidding, guys. That's not a property. Don't do it. 